today I'm going to be showing you how to create a hyperlapse video. Like many popular YouTubers do today, such as Taylor Cut Films and Sam Colder. Basically what you do is you take one photo, take a step, and then take another photo, making sure that one of the focus points stays on the same point on the building throughout the whole process. It creates really cool footage that looks super professional and it's honestly easy to do. One of the benefits of creating a hyperlapse video is that you don't have to worry about minimizing camera shake when filming video and it creates really interesting stuff. Really interesting. Really cool. Oh, variety! That's a stupid word! <laughs> and it also creates variety in your footage. The hardest part about creating hyperlapses is post-processing. So in order to make that easier for you, I will just show you the simplest steps and how I color grade the photos I took, plus how I create the actual hyperlapse. <laughs> Another benefit of making hyperlapses is that you're shooting in RAW. Therefore, it's basically like creating RAW footage like you would get from high-end film cameras or using an extension like Magic Lantern. So you'll have more creative reign on how the footage will look in the end and the mood it portrays. Now I'm going to demonstrate how you can go around a building in order to create cool movements that will show different angles of the building. And the more traditional method is to start from very far away, getting the whole building in the photo and then moving closer one step at a time until you're at the doorstep. It's a beautiful day for creating something like this. Whereas if I was shooting a portrait, I might lean towards cloudy days to create that soft box effect. And right now it's a partially cloudy day, so that has the benefit of making variety to your photos and giving it more dimension as the clouds move around. <laughs> The mistake I made when starting to make this video was that I kept my 50mm lens on my camera. I went out and forgot to bring my other lens, and my lens wasn't wide enough to capture the whole building. When you're using a wider angle lens, it has the benefit of creating more dimension, more movement, and overall it has the benefit of giving it a more surreal effect. So the second day I went out with my lens that I had used before for hyperlapses and got more footage this time that turned out very well. The lens I'm using is a 24 to 105 millimeter lens in most of these hyperlapses. And in addition, when you have a wider lens, you have a bit of distortion, which actually makes it look way cooler as the building, as the lines will go from like here to like there. You get sharper angles and it's more interesting to watch. So first thing you do is you import it into Lightroom. And once you have all of your photos selected, you can just import them. I have a few photos, if I go through this, that were bad angles, so I went and reshot them. So I'm just going to mark those ones as bad because we don't want to use them. And then if you look in the top left, that's basically what it's going to look like, but with smoother motions. So then we're going to edit the colors in the photo. This is basically what I want it to look like pasted from a different hyperlapse that I shot and edited, but I'm going to start from scratch right here. So we want to get a sort of contrasty look, especially since the picture is going to be at 1080p in the final video and shot in approximately 4k. Definitely bring the highlights down and the shadows up. Highlights down will make more details show up in the sky. You can increase the clarity if you'd like, but it's probably not that necessary. And then we're going to change the colors around a little bit. I'm going for a bit of a teal and orange look. So I want the reds, oranges, and yellows to be more of a reddish orange look. And we definitely don't want to make it too green. Like that's too green, but I'm going to make it a bit more contrasty by making the orange and the yellow go in opposite directions and basically just move things around until you find something that you like. I really want it to be 
bright colors because it'll make it look more surreal which is basically the goal and then i want the sky to be more of a teal color usually the cyan doesn't actually change it but the blue does and then the purple and magenta i find that in most photos i mean depending on the colors you're using in the video the photos most of the time you don't need to change that so that's my first version this is my new version and then we're going to play with the camera calibration usually i go for a similar look as you can see going one direction or the other creates it very drastically one way or another but i want to go for more similar to what i just edited usually it'll just brighten the colors up a bit make them deeper and i like the way that looks so i'm going to paste it onto every other photo we have in this sequence and i sped this up for you <laughs> Make sure you don't miss any photos. I did miss photos here, but I went back and fixed them later. So now you have all of your photos. Deselect the ones that you don't want if you redid any of them, and then you should export them to a file with sequential names. And if we calculate, we can divide the number of pictures we have by 24 to get the number of seconds this should take total because we want to maintain the 24 frames per second rate throughout the video. So then once all of the photos are exported, we can just select them all and drag them into Adobe After Effects. If you select the first photo that you want and then go into the bottom and select the last photo in the order you want, then it will go in the correct order. And then it doesn't really matter. If you click Add to Render Queue, that'll save some time. Not too much, not a big deal. If you forgot to save to render queue, you just go to file and export and then add to render queue. And then you go over to your render queue and you want it to be lossless, orange1.mov, and then click render. And then you wait for it to render and you can see a bit of a sneak peek as to what it looks like. Yeah, you saw that frame, that was an unedited photo. I think there was one picture that was blank for some reason, but we're not going to worry too much about that. Maybe I deleted it by accident. I fixed that before going over here. And then you're going to go and find the video that was exported somewhere here. Eventually we'll get to it. And drag it onto your sequence. If you play it, it'll be pretty choppy, but nothing to worry about right now. Then you want to click it, make the speed go to around to the amount it needs to be to become around the number of seconds it should take according to the frames. And then for scale, if you go to 30, that will make the whole picture fit in the frame. It'll have black on the sides, but usually when you stabilize it, it'll crop in a bit. So then you, if you drag warp stabilizer onto it right now, it won't let you, so you have to first nest your clip into a nested sequence, name it whatever you want, and then if you drag warp stabilizer on, it will effectively do so. Just wait for that to work. Your results will really depend on your pictures that you have. In this instance, the pictures didn't go out, weren't quite straight, and it had a hard time stabilizing it correctly with the original settings, so I was trying to figure out what was wrong with it, but then if you just go and change it from 50% to a smaller number, sometimes that'll fix it. I found that 14% was pretty good for this video. It's very smooth and creates the motion that you want without it being unstable at all, hardly. <laughs> and then increase the scale to where you can't see the black on the edges. And if you play it through, here's another little bit we have to account for. So increase that by a little bit more. And you are shooting in approximately 4k when you're taking the photos so you don't have to worry about decreasing the quality too much and then if you play it through you'll see that there aren't black around the edges of the clip anymore so then if you render your sequence from in to out then you can see what it looks like in the end after everything's stabilized and smooth if you have used these tips in this video to create a hyperlapse and would like to share it with me just send me a link anywhere find me on instagram Twitter. So thank you so much for watching and if you could give this video a like that would really help me a lot as I'm just starting out with YouTube. I'm really excited to begin this journey and seize 2019. <laughs>